Okay, so in this video, we are gonna demonstrate how to measure trunk rotation range of motion with a goniometer, as well as trunk rotation MMT. So the trunk rotation happens in the transverse plane. The end feel is firm, and the normal value is zero to 45 to the right, and zero to 45 to the left. Okay, the patient position is sitting in a stable wooden chair with feet supported, but back unsupported. So yes, we needed her to come forward two or three inches. You're, oh no, don't, don't come, yeah. Cause I don't wanna have to lean too far over you and then, you know, not feel good in my low back. So you don't want them leaning against the back of the chair because you don't want the back of the chair to impede her ability to go through her full range of motion. So if her feet aren't touching the floor, we give a couple of these little foam squares. Um, if someone is limited in trunk rotation, I wanna kind of demonstrate to you a comp compensation that will happen. So if someone's limited in trunk rotation, you might see um, either excessive cervical rotation or um, sc like scapular protraction and retraction. So if I'm rotating to the right, my right scapula might retract and my left one might protract. So if we see that extra shoulder motion, but that's not trunk motion, we need to make sure that we eliminate that because that's gonna throw off our measurement. Okay, so to measure this, the therapist is gonna stand behind the patient. Depending on the height of the patient, the height of the therapist, you might need to stand up on a stool because you need to be able to look directly down at your patient. What I did is I lined up the wooden chair along one of these black lines on the floor in hopes that it will help me out as I will demonstrate in a moment. The fulcrum is gonna go over the center of the cranial aspect of the head and the stationary arm is gonna line up. It's going to be parallel to the line that connects the two iliac crests. So that could be quite challenging, palpating iliac crests and then trying to figure out what is parallel to that line. So we are going to assume that the line that connects the two acromion processes when she's in neutral is parallel to the line that connects her two iliac crests. So we're gonna make that assumption. So I'm gonna palpate her spine of the scapula bilaterally, make sure that I'm on it, and I'm going to take it out laterally, round that little corner, and now I'm on the lateral edge of her acromion processes. And so I have to line up my stationary arm parallel to that line that connects her to acromion processes. But what's gonna happen, cross your arms over your chest for me and rotate. When she rotates, that stationary line is going to move. So come on back. So what I, what I do is I take a look at this line that connects the two acromion processes and I know it's gonna move. It's not gonna be there for me to continue to look at. And I compare it to the lines on the floor. And luckily for me, hers is parallel with the black line on the floor. So that black line on the floor is not going to move. Okay, so when you're ready, I'm gonna have you turn to the right as far as you can. I didn't see any compensation. And now I'm gonna place the fulcrum directly over the center of the cranial aspect of her head. I'm gonna make sure that my stationary arm is parallel to that black line on the floor. And then this moving arm comes and it is parallel to the line that connects the two acromion processes, which I've already palpated and I've seen how the seam of her shirt lines up. So that is from zero to 39. Take a little break. So when it comes to setting up your goniometer, there are multiple ways to do this. You can hold it like this, so that both the stationary arm and the moving arm are over the right. And do you wanna come up and look down? Would this be a good time to do that or? Sure. So it could start here and then right rotation looks like this and left rotation looks like this. Or you can start it over here and right rotation looks like this and left rotation looks like this. Or you could start with it open and it could be right rotation left rotation. So there are lots of different ways to set up your goniometer. Whichever way works for you is fine, but don't get confused. A lot of students end up doing this and they're getting confused because this is our starting position for cervical rotation, but we don't care about the nose right now. We're only looking at the trunk. So just make sure that that doesn't confuse you. All right, so 
we are going to do some NNT for trunk rotation. So we're gonna head over to this table. And I'm gonna have you lie on your back, please. All right, beautiful. So this is very similar to trunk flexion. All right, so I don't think I need this. Okay, so for a grade three, so we're doing rotation now, okay? I'm like about to do, no, oh. arms out straight. Mm -hmm. So arms straight across over your body, but instead of the flexion, she came straight up, right? Um, hands towards your toes. This time, so you're not doing the full sit up. It's more like a little crunch. But instead of coming straight toward your toes, you're bringing your right shoulder toward your left knee or your left foot. So this is a test for left rotation strength. Okay, so, and when we test left rotation strength, the only thing she has to do to earn a three is to clear the inferior angle of this right scapula. Okay, so go ahead when you're ready. Good, come back down. So she cleared her inferior angle, so she earned a three. If she did not clear that inferior angle, we would give her a two. And the only thing we wanna check for in terms of compensation is to make sure that those feet are not coming off of the bed, which is why when I'm testing left trunk rotation MMT, I tend to stand near the right side of her head so that I can see two things at once. I can make sure that the right inferior angle clears and I can also check her feet. If I'm standing down here, I can neither see her feet behind me nor can I see her inferior angle because it's, it's underneath her. So that was a grade three. Grade four is arms crossed over your chest. You're gonna do the same thing. Bring your right shoulder to your left knee, come back down. Good, she cleared her inferior angle, so that's a four. Hands clasped. So we don't clasp the hands behind the head because that gives people an opportunity to like yank on their head and we want to avoid that. So hands clasped around the ears. It's going to be much easier if the elbows come in together. So we really want to make sure that you keep your elbows out to the side and it's the same motion. So right shoulder toward left knee. Good. Come back down. And she cleared. So she's a five. We talked about two, three, four, and five. Let's do one and zero. So one and zero, we're going to get into hook line. So bend your knees up, plant your feet on the, on the table here. And I'm gonna cradle the patient up into hook line so that we can get these muscles in a better position to fire up. So just lift your head, I'm gonna cradle. Notice I'm not cradling her like this, cause that would hurt, or like this where she has to hold her own head up. I'm really close and I'm trying to give her as much support as possible. Before I do this, because I'm going to talk for a minute and we don't need to be like two inches away. <laughs> but for left rotation, what happens when, when we do left rotation is we've got contraction of the left internal obliques and the right external obliques. So when we palpate for grades one and zero, we always palpate the external obliques. So I'm going to have her turn, bring her, I'm going to have her try to bring her right shoulder to her left knee and I'm going to put my hand on the right side of your belly. Okay, so bring your head up for me. So I'm cradling her. I've got my hand on the right side, external obliques. Can you try to bring your right shoulder to your left knee? Good. And if I could feel anything happening, I would give her a one. If I don't feel anything, I would give her a zero. And then we would do the exact same sequence on the other side. However, it is possible, that was one method. One method is I did literally tested three, four, and five uh, for left trunk rotation. And then I would, then measure three, four, and five for right trunk rotation. But another way to do it is to combine it, which I didn't talk about in the flexion video, did I? Oh no, flexion, there is no right and left, it's just one, okay. I'm overthinking this. Okay, so grade three, arms out. So we would test left trunk rotation first. You're gonna come up, bring your right shoulder towards your left foot, good, and come back down. And then I'm gonna have you bring your left shoulder towards your right foot. Now I'm looking at the left inferior ankle, good, come on down. So I just tested three for, for left trunk rotation, three for right trunk rotation. Cross your arms over your chest. I'm gonna have you bring your right shoulder towards your left knee, good. And then same thing on the left, perfect. Good, and then hands clasped and same exact thing. Good, come on back down and perfect. So there are two methods. You could totally separate left and right or you could intertwine them like I just did. Am I missing anything, you think? Oh, hold on, I got my cheat sheet. Enfield, normal language. Oh, um, so we talked about two being scapula does not clear. 
Also, when in hook lying, if their rib cage depresses at all, that's a two. So if there's actual movement of the rib cage and it depresses, when I have her in that hook lying position, and I say, hey, try to bring your shoulder to your, to your other knee, rib cage depression is also considered a two. All right, that's it. Thank you.